Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. Here I have the Longer Ray 5, which is Longer's first entry into the laser market after having many successful 3D printers. Now, it is very similar to a lot of other lasers, but it has a touchscreen with an offline controller right attached to the laser, which is super convenient and one of the best features about this laser. But how does it stack up otherwise? Can the laser diode keep up? How is the assembly process? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Now, full disclosure, Longer did send over uh, this laser for review, but they have agreed to my review terms and have in no way influence over what I'm saying in this video. Out of the box, this laser is actually quite a bit more work to assemble than some of the other ones. Now, it's not that really bad or anything, uh, it's just uh, after having uh, reviewed the Alfero Laser Master 2 at the same time, uh, that one took me like 10 minutes to assemble and get running and this one was closer to an hour, which is still not bad, but definitely a bit more work. A lot of that is because you just have to uh, assemble all of uh, the, the belts and everything uh, by yourself, you even have to uh, attach the motors and the little uh, crossbar here, which is the design that a lot of lasers have been using, but is starting to feel slightly older than tooth. Especially since uh, the belts here are just using some little screws that are pushing down on them, which makes the belt twist slightly when you tighten it, uh, instead of having them like come out the front and be clamped there, which would be nicer and would not be that difficult to add, but just not what they went for. But after you've got it assembled, uh, it's not really a big deal at all. What I do like is that they have some sort of cable management going on here. They have a, like a little uh, stiffer uh, piece in here in this uh, cable chain, which makes it so that it is just out of the way. Now, if you're building an enclosure, it might be a bit annoying that it is sticking up this high, so you might want to add a drag chain or something. But if you just have it out on the table, uh, this works great. The cable is never in the way and does not get kinked in any way. The other end of that uh, cable is the laser attachment head, which is laser very similar to all the other uh, high-end lasers that are out on the market. It compares very well to the LU2-4 uh, long focus version that Artur and Alfero is using in a lot of uh, their uh, machines. And that is a good thing. It is very powerful and it has a great laser spot. But a bit more about on that later. Now, with these things covered, I want to talk a bit more about the controller here. I guess having quite a few 3D printers out on the market, uh, they already have all of uh, the engineering figured out to make uh, easy to use, uh, convenient user interfaces. And well, there's nothing super advanced about this interface. It is quite responsive. You can click on the things. It looks nice. Some of the translations are a bit rough, but uh, it is uh, quite clear and you can get all the functions. You can uh, upload your uh, designs that you want to engrave with an SD card and just select them. And while the laser is running, you actually have control over uh, the speed and power settings, which is really convenient actually, uh, as uh, with Lightburn and other software, you can not really adjust any settings on the fly. Uh, whereas uh, if you have your file on the SD card and you notice, oh, wait, it is actually not quite uh, dark enough the engraving. You can either bump up the power if you're not at the maximum or slow down at the speed slightly to adjust on the fly. This is especially great if you're like working with a new material and trying to figure out the settings. It's a very easy way uh, to uh, adjust that stuff. Now, what I find slightly weird is that those settings are actually saved and then the next uh, file that you're printing is also going to use those settings. So just something to keep in mind that you're going to want to check uh, that you set them back. Uh, but it's just something you get used to. Now, there is also Wi-Fi on here, uh, which allows you to uh, connect to it and basically control all of the same settings as well. You can upload uh, files to the SD card over Wi-Fi. It's not super fast for like normal uh, engraving and cutting uh, files, that works fine. But if you have a large file for something like uh, image engraving, it's going to take a little bit to upload. Now, as you can see here, the interface, it is uh, quite basic. Uh, you can just have uh, all your, your uh, direction controls, speed, uh, that uh, kind of thing. And uh, here you can uh, look at all the SD card uh, files. I don't have one plugged in at the moment. What is quite convenient, though, is that you can also uh, adjust all of the settings uh, uh, of your laser in here, which is uh, quite nice if you ever want to uh, change any of those. Now, you shouldn't really have to worry about them, but if you ever get curious and want to uh, play around with that, they are very conveniently uh, accessible here as well. 
In terms of stability, uh, I've had mixed results. Uh, you just kind of select the Wi-Fi network and type in the password on the touchscreen, which uh, works surprisingly well. Uh, if you have uh, slightly larger fingers, you might want to use a little tool, but uh, it's a resistive touchscreen, so you can use any sort of pencil or whatever uh, to type in uh, your password. And uh, then it usually connects quite well, but I found that it sometimes just forgets the password and you have to re-enter it uh, to reconnect. Uh, so it's not necessarily always uh, the most convenient, uh, but it works if you want to use it. You can, of course, also connect to it over USB uh, and then use a light burn or a laser gerbil or any other uh, software uh, to connect to it directly. That is what I did for most of the testing since it is just more convenient than having to uh, switch files back and forth. One quick note there is that I did have to upgrade the firmware uh, to be able to connect to Lightroom. Uh, I'm assuming that the newer model ship with the updated uh, firmware, but the old one had an issue where light burn would just not work with it. Uh, but after the firmware upgrade, which was quite straightforward, uh, it is working flawlessly. So let's talk about what this machine can do. And uh, I've already mentioned it that uh, the laser on here is comparable to the long focus version on the Laser Master 2 Pro and the Alfaro laser. Uh, that means it has a lot of power. Uh, cutting a 4mm plywood is just a breeze. Uh, you can uh, cut it at around 300mm uh, a minute in a single pass, or if you want to move up to uh, multiple passes, uh, you can go uh, a bit faster and do more passes, which gives a slightly uh, cleaner cut, but might take a second or two longer. Uh, you can also go thicker, uh, up to like 8mm of plywood is going to be fine, though at that point you will want to start thinking about adding an air assist. Now you can of course also uh, cut different uh, materials, uh, like acrylic, as long as it's not clear, uh, works great. Uh, you just have to like do enough passes uh, to go about your business. And uh, stuff like leather, cardboard, uh, all of that stuff uh, also cuts very easily. Then moving on to engraving, uh, of course the power is there and that you could engrave super fast. However, sadly for image engraving, uh, like these ones here, this machine kind of fell flat on its face. It has the power to theoretically engrave uh, like 10,000 millimeters uh, a minute, which is what I just did on the Alfaro Laser 2, and that was very impressive and super speedy. Uh, however, this machine cannot do that. Uh, I tried uh, going at 5,000 millimeters a minute, which is the kind of rated speed, and uh, it was just not having it. Uh, engraving like simple lines and stuff at that speed, perfectly fine. Like the motors and everything are... Yeah. Engraving lines and simple uh, stuff at that speed is no problem at all. Like the motors can totally keep up and accelerate this machine quite well and the like kinematics of it are sturdy enough so that you don't get a bunch of jitter or anything. But the problem was that just turning on and off the laser fast enough for those really fine uh, differing points was just not in this controller's abilities. The actual speed uh, which it was engraving at on average was closer to maybe like 3000 millimeters a minute, which is still decently fast, but it was not quite even. Like uh, if you have like a line that where there's not, not a lot of uh, turning on and off, it would go slightly faster, and then it would stutter if it has to turn it on uh, really fast, uh, which is just not ideal. And I had the same uh, results connecting it via light burn uh, through the USB port and going off of the internal SD card. Uh, now, if you just want to every once in a while do an image engraving, that still perfectly works. But if uh, image engraving is the main focus uh, for you to get a machine, uh, this is probably not the one for you. Everything else though, engraving works great uh, on wood, on acrylic, on leather, on stainless steel actually. Uh, not really any other materials, uh, not any other metals, uh, unless they're painted or anodized. So like anodized aluminum would also work great. Uh, any sort of uh, painted metal also works great. So you can basically do a whole gamut of what you would want to do with a hobby laser and the results will come out great. And with that, I hope you liked this video. If you have any more questions, leave them down in the comments and make sure to subscribe to not miss any future videos. With that said, thanks for watching and until next time.